Hi, I'm Mike. Branding is one of the most controversial times on the ranch, and this year we broadcast it live for over six hours, leaving some questions answered and some, well, maybe not. Today we take a look back at Branding 2020 and hopefully continue to answer those questions on our Wyoming Life. <laughs> Behind me, the corrals stand quiet, and it's actually a really nice feeling because only a few hours ago, there was a lot going on right back here. Over 20 guests came to the ranch and got to experience, in some cases, their very first branding, their very first close-up interaction with cows and their calves, and in others, well, their very first look at where their food comes from and what it takes to get it to your table. Branding itself is really more than a tradition, although many will tell you that's all it is. And in some cases, maybe they're right. Traditionally, branding was a time for neighbors to gather, to help one another, to learn and reconnect, seeing friends that you might not have seen in months or even years. Today on the ranch was really no different. But the reasons why we brand reach far more, farther than just connecting with others. We're gonna look at all those reasons today as we take a look at branding 2020. Today you're gonna to see a mix of video from our live stream, as well as video that didn't make it to the live stream. You'll take a look behind the scenes at the processes to get uh, mine and Aaron thoughts about uh, even strangers coming to visit the ranch. Our philosophy and on ranching itself and, and probably a, a whole lot more. It's a inside look at, at one day on the ranch and how it turned out. But we started the process the day before when we decided to test how it was all gonna work. I'm recording. <laughs> okay. Okay. okay, do you want to introduce everybody? We can introduce everybody. Let's do introduce? That. Introduce. <laughs> introduce everybody. I wasn't planning on doing that. Okay, okay, we'll just do it quick. All right, so from Chicago, Illinois, we have Jake Bethel. <laughs> Beth Hudson. Tammy. <laughs> Lauren. And yeah. from San Francisco, California. <laughs> What's your name? Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Aaron. <laughs> Our plan is this, we're gonna go over and get Goliath and Peanut. We're gonna walk them somehow <laughs> over to the corrals. Once we get them in there, we're gonna move them through just like we're gonna move the calves. So you guys will get used to how everything moves through. We're gonna brand them, we're gonna vaccinate them. We are gonna ban them and give them a new air tag. And hopefully it goes smooth and everything works. Hopefully so. this is gonna go that yeah. way. We're gonna go that way. If we get a Come on guys. Let's go. We're gonna go do something. It'll be fun, I swear. Come on. Good girl. Good girl. Good boy. which all of us are in here. So I need to go around and be ready to catch a cow because okay. otherwise yeah, yeah. they're just going to go right through. Okay. So I'm going to go over to the squeeze. Okay. One at a time, right? Yeah. Yes. We just want to bring him up so his head goes into this little gap here. <laughs> Come on, girl. Boy. Boy. <laughs> Okay, there we go. He's gone. He can't go anywhere. Okay. Um, we just need to figure out like a new order with this system. Okay, so give him that. Okay, that's not very much fun. Let's uh, squeeze him down just a little bit. Let's see if we can. Okay. This way. Tammy, hold his tail so we can see. <laughs> Still probably can't see. Oh, you probably can't see, okay. 
Okay, so that's that. That works somewhat well, as long as we're calm and yeah. everybody's happy. Yeah. We have a left rib brad, yeah. which means it needs to go right where that bar is. I can fudge it. I can't squeeze him anymore. And There's our problem. <laughs> Maybe get around here. He's gonna move forward or backwards. So we always brand this. right. Right where that bar is. Right, yeah. Mid chest. So, so if you go too far forward, then it's a left shoulder brand. So left shoulder's up here. It would be back here. So I basically I have to get somewhere in this area. So if I can get he's gonna jump. But... That's not deep enough. Yeah, and look at Come forward a little bit, buddy. That's gonna hold him there. Oh, and that's an ugly brand. Oh. <laughs> and it's not even into the skin. That's just hair. I didn't even get the skin. And it's too far forward. That's all. Okay, try it again. Okay. Give up after. Okay. Okay. Go try it again. If you count three, then you probably count it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you just have a special goal. I wish you could call public. I'm happy to come. Actually, if you count three, yeah, call Guinness or somebody. <laughs> <laughs> or he's larger than normal. I was about to say that, but he wants to be the one to say it. Are you kidding? Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's actually not horrible to band them in here. It's not, it's not bad. But so again, we have our our rib issue. But he's actually bigger. And he's also like trying to lay down though. He is trying to lay down too, which is going to cause a problem. What would happen if you opened the bottom and closed the middle? Yeah, I can't. I can't. Can we open one? If we can get that fit. And yeah, I mean, we can open that, but then he's going to be able to this one up. And then he's going to kick when he gets branded. Jake, watch out. So, yeah, if we brand left rib, this bar is in the way. He's like, We're done. So that's it. That's uh, proof true. of concept. But we're going to keep trying it with the other calves and see how it works. I'll try um, a few on Saturday. I'll try a few and see how it works. Those two bottle caps gave us an idea of how the next day was going to go. I loved working them through this new AeroQuip system. They moved through all the alleys, I mean, fly, flawlessly. And, and uh, thanks to the fact that the alleys are actually adjustable from the biggest bull to the smallest calf. When they arrived at this chute, the head, sh the head catch held them safely. which and, and while they were held there, I was able to band, vaccinate, and do everything that I needed to do. And if we had a hip or a shoulder brand, I have no doubt that we could complete the entire process in the AeroQuip chute, making the AeroQuip chute really the most versatile chute I've ever used. But after those two, I did have my doubts on whether or not we were going to be able to use it the next morning. We did try it again, this time with our calf that suffered a broken leg a few weeks ago. It was his turn to be the first wild calf to go through this chute. And as you can see, that leg obviously is still broken or was broken, but getting around pretty well, able to use that leg and uh, move around pretty good with it. Gate that closes and closes and closes, gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Calf goes in, we close it up. Here comes the calf, comes through. Go ahead and open up that one. And I'm gonna open up the the squeeze just a little bit. Calf comes in. Ah, oh, Nikes. Calf just went right back out. Crap. I'm gonna try this again. In comes the calf. Zach's in the process of moving the calf through. It comes in. Keep going. Not yet, Mike. Yeah. See, this is just not So this is what's gonna this is what's gonna potentially kick us over to the 
to the calf table instead of being able to use the, the air equip. And so while it works great for vaccinations and, and banding, uh, just the location of our brand, it's tough. <laughs> So, so when we did our bum calves last night, this was a problem that we had too, is that they start to lay down. Um, Mike, you can't do that. Hey, somebody go around, grab his tail, and pull his tail up. Yeah. So cool thing about the air equip is how we can sort into all these different all these different crowds. So by this rope system. Right out of the chute are they are more docile. And last year they did not want to come out. We had to fight a lot to get them out. Um, I mean, that's the problem we're gonna run into with every single calf is that we're not able to brand them. Well, it's really nice to be able to vaccinate them and everything in there. If you can't brand them, we have to run them through twice. So we're going to just flip them up over here to the calf table because we can't get a brand on them. So we have to be able to do that. Yeah. We have to be able to brand them in the right spot. Yeah, we legally have to brand them in the right spot. Um, if we put that brand in the wrong location, if we take our rib brand and put it on a hip or a shoulder, that's not our brand anymore. And so that's not our cattle. Um, brand inspector could say, that's not your brand, that's the wrong location. If somebody took our calves, stole our calves, and we tried to get them back, they would say, you don't, you have, your ranch is, your ownership is registered to a left rib brand, that's a left shoulder brand, and we're, it's not our cattle anymore. So we have to do this the right way. So with our branding location, which is registered with the state, it has to be on the left ribs, and it was just not working in the AeroQuip shoot. While every other process of branding was just clicking right along, this was really a deal breaker and made us fall back on our backup, which luckily I set up hoping that I wouldn't need it. But without it, it would have been a much, much harder job. This week I actually put this old calf table in here in the AeroQuip system, and now it did come in handy. Calves are loaded into the AeroQuip bud flow tub where we'll able to move them towards the old calf table. A little bit of new and a little bit of old, working in tandem to get the job done and get it done safely. And branding's not only about branding the calves, it's about making sure that they're healthy, checking out each one as it came through the chute, and making sure that they're vaccinated with medications to ensure that they don't get sick over the next few months on the ranch, including vaccines to prevent pneumonia, respiratory diseases, and, uh, I just forgot what it's called. Um, tetanus, there we go. And uh, we do that in the way of a seven-way vaccine with Pyramid 5 and Prespons, along with Nasal Gin. All are selected by our vet to keep our herd healthy and productive over the long summer. However, for one calf, it may have been a case of too little, too late, as we found her and she started to, she appeared to be suffering from a form of dust pneumonia that was threatening her life. So as others were receiving treatment to prevent her very ailment, she took me away from the action for a few minutes, and while others held down the fort. For the last half an hour or so, I have been dealing, if you've noticed, I've been gone. Um, I have been dealing with a calf that uh, went, that basically, it looks like it's dehydrated. Um, we're not sure what exactly is wrong with it. It went down in the, in the uh, corrals and wouldn't get back up. So what I did, uh, went over, checked it out, took its temperature, uh, listened to its lungs, that kind of stuff. And, and I'm guessing it's just overheated. Um, not exactly sure why. Uh, dehydrated probably would be, uh, would be a big thing. So what we did was uh, we tubed the calf, which means that we gave it about two quarts of milk, um, powdered milk or the, the milk replacer that we use. And uh, I also gave it a shot of new floor. Uh, which is a uh, respiratory medicine, uh, banamine, which is an anti-inflammatory, and a uh, little bit of antibiotics uh, in the form of Exceed. 
So we brought that calf once we got all those medications into it and we got the, uh, the, the liquids in it. We ended up bringing it over here to our yard because we wanted to make sure that we could get it into the shade. Now this calf is not doing great. I can tell you that much. We put it underneath the, uh, underneath the trampoline here and, uh, and laid it in um, so that it's able to at least be in the shade. There's not a whole lot else that we can do for her at this point, but really all we can do for her right now is just let her rest. We wanted to make sure we got her in some shade. We also wanted to get her out of the corrals because the dust and stuff like that is no good. When you're having trouble breathing, you don't want to be breathing dust while you're at it. So uh, we will give her a little bit of time. She is a little bit bloated, which might be a problem that we have to deal with. We're not exactly sure yet if this is just bloat or what's happening here. Um, it doesn't feel like air, so. But who knows? I mean, there's a number of things that could be going on with her. Um, she could have gotten in and eaten some trash. Um, I mean, there's there's, there's just there's really no way of knowing right now, so. Keep an eye on her and see what she does. And I mean, there could be any number of reasons why she's acting like she is, but um, obviously she's dehydrated. She's a little bloated. Um, she could have gotten eat in and eaten some trash for all we know. She could have twisted gut, um, which is, would be rare for a calf, you would think. But if she, but if she ate something goofy, um, we're just going to keep an eye on her. And, and then we'll come back and we'll put a tube down her throat and we will get uh, any gas that's in that we can reach out. Luckily, uh, we're very lucky to have a good crew here that's uh, working their butts off uh, while we're out screwing off. So when I returned, the whole thing was running like a well-oiled machine. I think I'd been gone for maybe 20 minutes at most, getting her vaccinated and tubed and all that good stuff. But I'm pretty sure that I lost my job. In reality, it was a godsend having all the people here that were willing to help. And while a single calf was out there dangling by a thread, I was able to go deal with that. And, uh, and when I left her to recover, I went back to the fray. And well, this time, even my nine-year-old daughter, Mackenzie, well, she was gunning for my job too. All right, Mackenzie's gonna give a shot. Just gonna do it right down in there. Okay, so somebody might have to hold it up for there her. There you go. Poke it kind of sideways. It there you go. Like push it in. Push it all the way in. Push it till it goes. Push, 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 push. There you go. There you now go. squeeze. Squeeze. squeeze you got it. Doesn't yeah. squeeze far. That's it, sweetie. Good job. High five. Oh, oh. Okay. Oh, that's a messed up egg. Put your hand on mine. Okay, you ready? Come in. Open this up. Ready? Okay, just barely touch to start with. Okay. Let's turn it off, Mike. 30 times? Okay. There you go. Well done. Look at that bar. There you go. Push it all the way up. It's just not somewhere that I really thought I would ever be watching folks from Los Angeles, San Francisco, Chicago, work in an environment that I'm sure that they never ever really thought they would work in. And it was somehow very amazing and, and gratifying to me. We always say that we want people to know where their food comes from, but I never thought that I would be giving people a hands-on look at what it takes to get there. But I do know that one quest question that was asked really did hit home. Mike, what has been the greatest thing about your life as a rancher? Would you change your lifestyle? I gotta scroll back because I didn't read it anything for anything else. At this point, no. I can tell you though, uh, our first year or two here, it was very much in uh, in debate on whether or not I was gonna stay. Um, I was still, you know, getting offers from different radio stations and stuff like that. I was new out of the radio business, and it's hard to change your career. It's hard to to uh it's you know when you change your career nowadays you're changing yourself you're changing your whole identity because you know so much of what you do who you are is wrapped up in what you do and uh and that's one thing that i think that uh um a lot of people miss out on is that even though you know now i've become a rancher um and that's what i do i don't you know i i, I don't i i 
don't think that's all who I am. Uh, you know, you're still you're still a number of different things, no matter what you do. And and uh, when I worked in the corporate world, I really got into that mode mindset. Uh, you know, you are what you do, and and. Uh, I honestly think that's a dangerous way to, to look at your life. I think we're all plumbers, we're all electricians, we're all firemen. We need more of those? Okay. Uh, awesome. Um, we're all uh, everything that we need to be. And if you're not, then you're, you're pigeonholing yourself. And that's one thing that ranching taught me is that you have to be a little bit of everything. You have to be, you have to be all those, all those things. That's what I'm most thankful uh, to ranching for, is that I got a chance to, to see what I could be and uh, all the things. And it's, and it's still happening because even with, uh, with YouTube and, and the, the opportunities that we've been given and a chance to be a voice uh, for our industry, uh, you get to, uh, I, I'm still learning who I am. So if I say I'm a rancher, I'm a farmer, um, that's just a fraction of who I am or who you are. So don't let yourself be pigeonholed. Um, be everything because you can be. I know that sounds like a, a pep talk, but it's true. And it's something that I'm coming, I'm still figuring out, you know, and I think that a lot of these people here are the same way. The day itself is named for branding. And eventually, that's a step that has to be done, and one that I can tell you I don't really relish in. I don't enjoy it, but at this point in time, it's something that has to be done. The brand is the only way to identify your cattle. A calf or even a cow without a brand can belong to anyone, and anyone could come along and load them into a trailer, or in the case of a calf, maybe even a car, and take off with what is the livelihood for our family. Cows and calves, they do have ear tags, but in reality, they can really be removed in just a few seconds. Calves actually tear them out and someone can just cut them off if they want to. And then there's no way of knowing one calf from the next. The brand is actually a permanent marker on that cow and one that helps identify a cow or calf as ours. Cattle rustling, still a real thing. Thousands of cattle turn up missing every year and those that aren't branded are never returned. And how could they be when you can't prove ownership? Even calves or cows that cross the fence into the neighbor's place may be mixed up in their herd. And the old saying that says good fences make good neighbors, with cattle it also helps to have a, a decent brand. The calves themselves, well, when they come out of here they recover within seconds. While they do ball, once they're released, some even go lay down and wait to get turned back in with mom. While all calves get a new ear tag, one that has fly repellent built in to protect both them and their mom from biting and black flies, the boys have one more procedure to endure. For the first time this year, I got to band a calf standing up, thanks to the Aeroquip shoot. The band is a small rubber band that's placed at the base of the calf's scrotum, and it's tight and it cuts off blood supply, allowing the testicles to fall off and safely in time. The biggest risk is for tetanus, which we vaccinate for, to make sure that each bull becomes a steer with little risk. Steers grow faster, they're safer to work with, and they have no chance of impregnating any member of the herd. All reasons to do it and increase herd health. I thought that banding a calf standing up was gonna be hard, but in reality, so much easier. Gravity is actually your friend, and the boys really didn't seem to mind it. Although, I thought I might get kicked, but standing up, they're much more relaxed, and I guess that's when I kinda wish that our brand was in a different location, because we could have done everything right here in the Aeroquip shoot. And if we had, my life and everybody involved, I think would have had a much easier time. No flipping the calf, the calf would have been calmer. And the chances of somebody getting kicked by that calf that was scared to be flipped over on its side would have been much less. Luckily, nobody did get kicked. And the day went smooth and everybody was right on their game from the youngest to the oldest. My friend and moderator of our live streams, Matt, got the honor this year of finishing the last calf by himself. Well, really not much of a reward for a hard day's work. His smile made it worth it for me. I'm sorry. I went the cows and the calves, they were then reunited and went off to do whatever it is they do. Their next stop will be summer pasture where they'll spend the next few months getting together on the ranch. 
and while our branding crew hit the road and hopefully reunites next year for another tradition that will hopefully continue for me i had to go check on our sick calf who unfortunately didn't live much longer her pneumonia along with the heat of the day got the best of her and while treating her for bloat she passed away quietly reminding us that while branding is named for one procedure that protects the herd in one way, it's the vaccinations, the fly tags, and the secondary procedures that protect the health of our herd as well. Branding 2020, maybe not a, a total success, but it taught me lots of new tricks. Banding a calf, standing up, never would have thought that that would have been easier and safer. safer. And I guess while I've been using the calf table for years now, I think I'm gonna try to figure out a way to modify it so I can just band calves on their feet without having to flip them over on the sides. It's like, it's like anything else. You learn as you go. The AeroQuip corrals made it tons easier. The octagon in the middle saved us from trying to chase down calves that snuck through the chute, something we did plenty of times in the past, including tackling them and holding them down. In total, we brought 113 calves through the system, 113 calves that are now healthier and safer thanks to AeroQuip, our crew, and even you. Because without you, I don't think I'd be here today. And for that, I thank you. I hope you can subscribe, continue along as we watch our calves grow and experience the ranch life right here with you. Give us all an opportunity to escape the ordinary because Lord knows we need it nowadays. We'll see you tomorrow morning as we continue our weekday vlog and see where the winds of the ranch take us. Thanks a bunch. Have a great day and thanks for being a part of our Wyoming life.